mentioned baking this a bit earlier because then um, that's what we're sort of interested in right at, and particularly um not as just so much additions on baking but also oat cakes as well oat cakes yes right okay so um what would you understand an oat cake to be right uh, i i i've well i have made oat cakes because my oat cakes this is a sign of the times, and this is where we've gone wrong. My oat cakes would have sugar in them and right, would okay. be eaten with butter on, and they would be lovely. <laughs> but uh, oat cakes, oh, uh, but that, even that's gone out of the window now, because if you buy oat cakes in Allen's in Hawes, mm, yes, and they yes. sell a big variety, mm. they're all um, for cheese, and so mm. they're all not sweetened. You know, but I would say through the 50s, well, I don't know how much longer ago, but 40s, 50s, well, 50s, 60s, 70s, we were putting sugar in and making them sweet and mm. butter on, and they were absolutely lovely. But I wouldn't do that now, because mm. I would think I was getting too much sugar. Um and it, it, well, to go right back to the beginning, it was the staple diet. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you'll have yeah, seen up in yeah. the museum where, how they've made them on the Baxton, mm -hmm. which is, which is that, um, which is this. Yeah. And, and they would either make it thin and it would run out like a door. Mm. Or they would make it stiff and they would roll it out like pastry. Mm. And if they didn't have a Baxton, they could um, cook it on a griddle. Mm. Um, and then they used to either stand it up on an easel and dry it in front of the fire. Or they would just hang it over a slat and dry it up in, on the ceiling, mm. along with the bacon, because they would have killed a pig as well. Mm. Yeah, and salted it. And... Um, and then, as they went off to work into their lead mines or their slate mines or onto the farm, they would just break a bit off, cut a piece of cheese and go with it, and that would be lunch, mm. you know. Mm. But each village would have... I mean, even going back into the Middle Ages, uh, each village round here would have a mill so that they would be able to... We used to grow oats away back then, and that was the staple diet. But I, d I don't think... We haven't grown oats for any of the 1900s, any of the 20th century, I don't mm. think. I've never seen anybody really grow crops like that because the soil isn't deep enough to plough mm. and it's too stony and it's too cold and it, it wouldn't ripen. But oats, if you, ha if you had to grow them to live then obviously they've done that, haven't they, you know? Mm. Uh, uh, I don't know where I am now, but it, it does display very well up there at the museum how everything works, because they would have these sort of shovel affairs, and they would, because they were fairly big things, they would just slip underneath, and they might have had two put them together and then they could turn things over quite easily. So they just throw it onto the big yes. stone from there? Yeah, and uh, light a little fire underneath and then the stone on top would be the right temperature. Mm. Uh, and it would, it would be <clears throat> maybe, maybe in a kitchen or they used to have out like a place called a wash house. It wasn't mm -hmm. just the kitchen, it was like a scullery. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this this part, you would light the fire under there and you would boil your water in there and that would be for doing your washing. Mm. So I would call that a set pot. Right, okay. Or some people called them a copper, you know, different words. And then oat cakes have all these different names and uh, have a cake. Mm. I would just call it an oat cake myself. Mm. But to have a cake was the thing that was broken off, put into the bag, and taken to the field. And uh, that's why you called your haversack. Right, okay. A haversack, because it had your haver cakes in it. Oh, I see. I love to